can I start off by saying what a pleasure it is to be here with Herb Tabor? That should be deleted. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody, nobody yeah, that yeah. I respect more than Herb, and it's really wonderful to be here with you. Now yeah. I'm going to make him blush. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, now I'm really refreshed. <laughs> but we've been, we've yeah. been on the, uh, how, uh, I'm trying to figure out the number of years we've been together. Uh, I, I, was, I mentioned during my tape segment that I was 10 years on the editorial board, and then almost 25 years as an associate editor. And Herb, how about you? You've been what? Well, I was one term uh, in the mid-60s on the editorial board with uh -huh. John Edsel. Right. And then uh, in 1968, uh, Bill Stein invited me to be an associate editor when he became editor. Right, right. And then when, unfortunately, uh, he couldn't continue because of his illness, in 1971, I became editor. Ah, uh, yes. And you've been there ever since. <laughs> yes, but, but the journal, of course, <laughs> uh, has changed, has That's expanded. Right. That's right. And we have an enormous number of manuscripts and a large number of associate editors now. Right. And, and uh, as you know, uh, we all work together exactly. very well. Exactly. We have, uh, thanks to our chief. <laughs> no, no. Thanks, oh, no, 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 no. Now, thanks true. to everybody's uh, cooperation. And as I said yesterday, and uh, we don't make any decisions, really, uh, without thorough discussion by the uh, associate editors. That's right. That's and right. surprisingly, even though... Uh, uh, the discussions are very <laughs> frank. We always agree at the end <laughs> on, what we, on what the right uh, That's thing true. to do we is. We do, we do, we uh, do. Uh, yep. No. This is that. But I, I would just say one thing, Herb, is you have a, a great style in leading us, and I, uh, that that is you let people you let people say what they think, and and always always we reach a consensus under under your leadership, and I think. Uh, I, I know I speak for all the associate editors. What a joy it is working with you. I mean, it's just a pleasure. Well, thank you. But I, I, <laughs> in return, I would say it's primarily that we, we have some very, have always had very good associate editors. Yeah, and that's, that's been, true. And that's been what's so important. Yeah. And, of course, uh, we also uh, are so dependent on the editorial board, as you know. And yeah, a we wonderful are. group of people. Uh, we give a lot of thought, as you know, to uh, the associate editors and yep. I and uh, to the selection, but we've come up with a wonderful group. They are, and they work hard. It's amazing how much work. Yeah, we have people get 70 manuscripts. I don't know how they yeah. do it. It's really uh, and, and they just a great, they do a great yeah. job, our editors. I think they're, uh, they don't get enough credit, I think, overall yeah. for what they do. Where do you see the future of the journal? And what kind of risks do you think the journal has over the, over the long term? Where do you see the, the future going? Well, I think it's uh, pretty impossible to, uh, to predict. Uh, we certainly wouldn't have predicted when I started in 1971 that the journal would be the size it is. In fact, I remember that right. <laughs> when uh, we had 7,000 pages uh, that one of the associate editors quite correctly pointed out that we couldn't get any bigger. And, and technical things were uh, uh, important. They seemed trivial, but they weren't. For example, in those days, the binding wouldn't take journals uh, any bigger. Oh, that's right. That's and now right. we have 53,000 pages. It's amazing. And uh, with the electronic uh, yeah. uh, version, things are quite, uh, are quite different. I think the big problem that you're aware of and everyone else is, and that is that uh, you can't read everything. No. And you can't comprehend it. So that uh, well, when I first came to NIH, and I mentioned yesterday our seminar group, we would cover all the important biochemical <laughs> uh, papers. Yeah. We read all the biochemical papers that were abstracted in chemical abstracts. Yes. Yeah. Now, th that's uh, unbelievable now. Yeah. So that uh, we're becoming much more dependent on reviews. And, yes, yeah, and, that's right. And, and that's small right. meetings. 
things. And, and because of that, though, people become uh, much more uh, specialized. I think it's no secret to you or to anyone else reading the literature that uh, some of the titles are not even intelligible <laughs> if you're not right. in the field exactly. with all the acronyms e absolutely and so right. forth. Absolutely right. Yeah. That's right. So, uh, oh, it's been a big change. But you, you've worked your whole career at the NIH. Uh, you must have seen big changes there. In, uh, well, comparably, uh, it was a very small institution when I uh, came. It had just moved to Bethesda from uh, downtown. Right. And uh, was a very fine institution, but very small. And it's expanded now uh, to an enormous size. And of course, uh, perhaps even more important than the size of the intramural program, though, is the uh, extramural program. There were Amazing. no grants uh, before the war. Yeah. And uh, a lot of credit should be given to the administrators at that time who set up a grant rather than a contract system. Right. And the whole, with all its limitations, the whole system's been really remarkably good. And of course, it's been very important uh, for the development of science. Oh, it's true. You know, I had a chance recently to read your CV. Uh, and uh, what impressed me was that you and your wife, Celia, have worked on polyamines for so long uh, and have written a book on the, the, whole, the subject, and now polyamines are hot topics uh, for pathways like ap apoptosis, pathways that weren't even known when you began your work. Well, that's somewhat satisfying, <laughs> but of course you can, uh, well, shall we say, it's very satisfying. It must be. Uh, in fact, uh, the, I happened to look in uh, PubMed, and there were, uh, when we started, there were, say, a half a dozen papers at most a year in the subject. Yeah. And now PubMed has a total of about 69,000 references. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, neither C nor I have read most of the 69,000. <laughs> yeah. But not irrelevant from that point of view uh, and from the point of view of publication. Uh, all of those articles have something in it for the people working in the field. And that makes the whole question of publication very, very difficult. Yeah. In other words, the, we try for the journal to be fair, of course, in all, paper, in, in, in all our reviews, as you know. Right. But we feel we that, hope. yeah, we feel that, uh, well, we're forced, really, by the large numbers to uh, accept only those papers that, in the opinion of the reviewers, uh, make a substantial contribution right, to right. our understanding of biochemical mechanisms and so forth. Now, the papers we turn down, or even the papers we don't accept and are published in other journals, uh, I mean, I, I meant the papers that are not even submitted to us, right. uh, are of interest to us working in the field. Right. Oh, I'm sure. And uh, they uh, have to be published uh, somewhere. But of course, this leads to a very uh, large literature and goes back to what I was saying before, <laughs> that you can't read it all. No, you can't. But you, I, I, we were, when I was just discussing here about building a career around uh, an area that you work on, and you've worked on polyamines virtually your entire career. Like, I've worked on a, on a subject my career. It, it, does it strike you uh, that that's an important way to develop a career? Or uh, was it wiser to, to do three or four things and, that are not related? Or is focus better, in your view? No, I think both, that both approaches would be uh, best. But I think following up your reasoning, uh, uh, a, a very important concept is that uh, you don't know where things are going to exactly. lead. Exactly. <laughs> a, a sort of somewhat older viewpoint uh, is that uh, if you do intelligent work, uh, it'll lead to uh, unexpected consequences. Exactly. And uh, that's important nowadays because there's much more of a tendency now to uh, support research, which is, in a sense, almost uh, 
shown already that it uh, is productive. And yeah, I worry right. that yeah, yeah. If both in the publication and in the grant support and, uh, that we don't uh, adequately uh, favor or support uh, the uh, new uh, imaginative work. But of course, that doesn't mean that, that every idea has to be supported. That's true. Yeah, that's so, absolutely uh, true. So, but this is a real problem, I think, in terms of publication. And uh, uh, I really feel very badly, as I write in my letters, and I feel quite honestly about it, that when we turn down uh, a paper where the work has been done very well, done, it has been very well done, but is not accepted because, in the opinion of the reviewers, it uh, doesn't justify a publication uh, in this journal. And I think that's, right. uh, that, that's very worrisome. Would you like to see the, the, the Journal of Biological Chemistry become uh, more uh, like a, uh, be more picky about what we accept, to triage at the beginning? Or do you think our system now is set up in an appropriate way for this era of, uh, of uh, science? Well, I think we, uh, I'd like to believe we have reached the compromise between the, the two aspects that right. I've been uh, uh, t uh, talking about. Uh, I certainly would not want the journal to uh, adopt the viewpoint that it will only take uh, exciting and fashionable work. Right. On the other hand, uh, we do like to have the journal be exciting enough for people to want to read it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. See. Exactly, exactly. Well, we publish. How many pages did we, how many articles did we publish last year? I think it's about 13, 14,000. 14,000. Uh, representing 53,000 uh -huh. uh, pages. Wow. Uh, That's a, you know, I, 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 com I hope you've read all of them. I have, yeah, uh, <laughs> naturally. Uh, yeah. I, I commented previously that I thought that, that, uh, we were technologically one of the journals that, that led the way in many, I was, a, a, in many aspects of electronic publishing. Let, let me, uh, uh, in all lack of modesty, point out that we were the first. Thank you. That's, thank not, you. Not, not only that, <laughs> but it was, uh, <laughs> but uh, almost everyone said that we, we couldn't do this with a journal this size, and they waited to see what happened to uh, our experiment. It was a big gamble. Yes, it was. Yes, yes. And the, uh, the, uh, you, you're speaking of the electronic review, submission, the whole, well, the whole no, package. No, I'm basically thinking the electronic publication. Uh, like publication, yeah. yes, yes. I, I think the electronic review and submission required an enormous amount of work by the uh, Associate editors yes, and by yes, the journal yes, staff, as yes, you remember, I do. It do was, I ever? Uh, uh, it was not easy because the computer programs were not quite set up. That's right. They had to be developed, but that was, I think, more routine. Uh, I think the uh, the publication per se uh, was more difficult and really had a uh, ha had a bigger impact because, as you know, they now mean. It now means that uh, the journal is available all over the world. Right, uh, right. And, uh, and with our setup, uh, it's available, in a sense, right from the beginning without restriction. It's terrific. You know, I was <clears throat> president of the ASBMB in 1999-2000, and one of the things I did, and I want you to comment on this, was to, was to establish or to, to start in motion the establishment of this wonderful plenary lecture series we have in your honor the, uh, that opens the, uh, the meeting, uh, the Tabor Lecture, which, and, and it's the Tabor it's slash JBC. Uh, and, and I would just like to say, since we're recording here, how, how important you've been to all of us in the field. I, I can't mention this enough. This plenary lectureship in your honor is, uh, is a very deserving tribute 
to what you've done. I know you're embarrassed when I say yeah. this, but I'm going to say it you're anyway. Certain, you're certainly I'm going to right. say it anyway. Uh, and that's, it's, that's why you're so such a wonderful mm -hmm. person. It is true that, that you have been the leader of the journal. That's taken it from, throughout this last 40 years, from... Uh, a route from the old style of, of editing into what now is a brave new world. Uh, we don't know where it's going to go, electronic editing. And I think this lectureship particularly is a very, very important way to say thank you to you for all you've done for us. Life is short, uh, and we want to honor you while, while you, we're able to, to see your smiling face. <laughs> and, uh, and this lectureship's been great. We've had yeah. such wonderful presentations. And, Maybe you could comment a, a little bit about that, because I, I think that we all consider this to be a high point of the meeting and, and a wonderful tribute to you. Well, obviously, uh, I appreciate your thoughts, uh, but I think they're a little exaggerated. In fact, no. a lot exaggerated. <laughs> uh, I like to believe that the uh, plenary lecture is the JBC lecture, and it really honors all of the associate editors, the editorial board members, the authors, and the reflects the excitement and the development of science uh, during the last uh, hundred years. And uh, even though, uh, again, I appreciate your comments, I feel that uh, it's the total community that's responsible. You know, uh, we were we were just mentioning uh, here a minute ago about the importance of uh, the personalities that work w with the journal and how, uh, uh, as the senior editor, Herb has dealt over the years with a lot of different styles of associate editors. And uh, and uh, maybe a few comments about this because uh, it just. I'm going to add something here. It, it, I'm not sure that another kind of personal leadership style would have done as well in bringing us to where we are today because clearly a lot of innovations have come uh, forward over the years. Uh, these innovations have required areas where let's say our senior editor is not an expert, uh, computer using computers for publication, yet somehow uh, we were able to put all this together in a way that's allowed the journal to move forward by tapping the skills of people around you. And I, I would compliment you on this, and I think, I think all my colleagues agree, that your leadership style, which is to be inclusive, uh, is an extremely important element of the success of the journal. So now, deny that. Well, I'll deny that <laughs> in this sense, that I, I feel that uh, in the operation of the journal, as well as in research, Right. The important thing is to realize that each person uh, can contribute in his, his or her own way. Right. And they each have their own style, and this goes for research as well as for the uh, operation of the journal. And that it's a, a value uh, both for a research program as well as for the journal, as you say, uh, to take advantage of everyone's uh, skills and approaches. And uh, we're never, sh no one can be sure that one approach is the right one, but if you get a whole group together with uh, diverse backgrounds, diverse interests, right. the uh, sum total uh, comes out uh, very well. And so again, <laughs> I come back to the fact that it, it's the associate editors who've been so important and uh, well, and uh, m my only role is to uh, uh, respect uh, the competence of each one, each associate editor and realize how much the the associate editor can contribute. But I, I would I would hope that the listener to this realizes this is what leadership is all about. It's it's being able to take what's best the people you're leading and make them feel that they're part of it, that this is, that, that their, that their con contribution is important. And I would say very respectfully, Dr. Tabor, that there aren't a lot of people who have that skill. You can make light of it by saying, all I did is to, is to use the skills of people around me. That's true, but that's extremely important, I think. You'd have to admit that, right? 
Well, I hope that's the case, but uh, uh, <laughs> I can't. I can't take credit, but I, think, <laughs> well, but I, but I hope that's the well, case. Well, I think this is. But but I think conceptually, as I say, both for uh, uh, the science and for the uh, journal, I, I, I think the concept that different people approach uh, problems differently is terribly important. Right. And I think again, uh, I think everyone, I think, will agree that uh, this is an important concept uh, in the whole research grant situation, that there be the concept that uh, different investigators are going to approach problems differently, and that uh, starting off with a, a preconceived idea of what should be either published or should be uh, supported uh, is uh, counterproductive. Oh, yes, I agree. Do you have any reflections on uh, some of the associated editors that worked in the, with the journal over the years, uh, particularly in the, uh, the early days? Well, if the, it's easier to talk about the early days because uh, uh, we now have such a large group that it would be uh, hard to go through each name as oh, much, yes, as, as, much yes, as I yes, would yes, like. Yes, yes. But uh, when I... Uh, Started F. Racker. Oh, F. Racker, who sure. Who, of course, is a uh, legendary uh, name, uh, uh, was one of the associate editors. And, of course, Gene Kennedy, Gene Kennedy who yeah. uh, yes. uh, was one of the associate editors. And uh, 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 they were absolutely this, uh, uh, superb. Uh, Bob Lehman came on relatively soon after I did. And he's been associated oh, for yes, a very, yes, very yes. long good time. Good man, very good man. And uh, has con has done an ext extremely uh, g good job in the whole nucleic acid area and in, in its development. And of course, he personally uh, has been involved in all the uh, exciting uh, basic uh, work in nucleic acid uh, enzymology. Well, it's been a great pleasure to be here with you, Dr. Tabor. Well, thank you. And have a chance to talk with you and uh, discuss some of these topics of interest to both of us and hopefully to our listeners. If, if, you had to, uh, if you had to say something to a viewer about what you'd like them to take away from your career, uh, and, and, and what would you say? I'd say just the, uh, that it's been a wonderful period uh, the excitement of biochemistry, uh, and uh, I was delighted to be a part of it and to be associated with so many wonderful people. There you go. You see. Thank you very much.